Okay. Good morning or good evening for everybody. I would like to introduce firstly Ernesto Ocampo and Mohamed Chuk. Please, Ernesto, go on. Good morning to everybody. Welcome to uh, a new webinar on our series about the Cartagena Protocol and the Biosafety Greenhouse. Uh, we hope you enjoy this webinar and that this uh, is useful for your uh, customer tasks. So welcome again and, and let's go for it. Thank you, Ernesto. Uh, Mohamed, come on, on, come on, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I will also contribute to this uh, webinar at the end, maybe after the discussion. Okay. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Mm, this is a training activity to assist countries to implement an international agreement as an instrument for addressing the importation and exportation of, of any living modified organism resulting from modern biotechnology. This international instrument is called Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety and the tool that we are going to use to give the assistance is called Biosafety Clearing House or BCH. This webinar gives emphasis to issues that are of particular relevance to customs control. Okay, I am Emma Rivera. I was the manager in the designing and development of the BCH in Colombia, participants at the BCH Informant Advisory Committee, uh, manager and panelist of workshops in different Latin American countries. I am a biologist and I am postgraduating at Bryan Science and uh, Biosafety. Before beginning the, control, the conference, I would like to show you how to use the control panel in this webinar. We are going to go through this slide very quickly. Uh, to the left is the viewer through which you can see the presentation and to the right is your control panel. To keep your control panel open, you can click the view menu and uncheck auto hide control. You can open and close your control panel with this arrow. You can choose your audio mode and you can raise your hand to participate and submit questions and comments through the screen that you have on the right side. It's very important to know that this webinar will be recorded for later publishing as part of the BCH education. Uh, in any case, the official word about uh, any aspect related to the Cartagena Protocol should be requested from the only UNEP official organization, the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. The red light indicates that the webinar is being recorded. If you do not want to be recorded, please maintain your microphone muted and don't share your screen. We are going to see a brief mention of the Cartagena Protocol, second phase of the PCH project, the virtual learning environment with its PCH education materials, one case study, and the Cartagena Protocol issues related. At the end of the session, we will have question and answer space. The Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety has the past procedures for the living modified organism transboundary movements. Some of the main procedures are the advanced and informed agreement procedures for LMOs for intentional introduction into the environment, procedures for LMOs for direct use as food or feed or for processing, unintentional transboundary movements, and information sharing about LMOs through the BCH. The Cartagena Protocol requires party some institutional arrangements. For example, each party shall designate one or more competent national authorities which shall be responsible for performing the administrative functions required by the protocol. Here there are some references which could be useful to get more information about the protocol. For example, the protocol web page and education materials. Into the education materials you can find training manuals, interactive modules, review reference guides, and webinars. Uh, through these uh, links you can access all the webinars in French, Spanish, English, Arabic, uh, and Spanish. A webinar specifically about the BCH 
education materials and others. The BCH2 project allowed the developing this kind of training activities because one of the main objectives is to continue assisting countries in strengthening national capacities to affect the access and use of the BCH. The BCH project has prepared and updated training packages in the five United Nations languages to assist the countries in learning, understanding, and using the BCH. One of the main objectives is the global diffusion of these training packages. The BCH education materials are on the virtual learning environment through uh, this web page. If you want to be a registered user to have access to all workshops and forums that have been developed, you can send an email to moodle at bca2project.org with your name, surname, and country. If you are not a registered user, you can access this webinar or this virtual learning environment as a guest. Here we can log in as a registered user or as a guest to the virtual learning environment. On the virtual learning environment, you can see the training packages in five languages, English, Spanish, French, Russian, and Arabic. You can see all the national and regional workshops that have been carried on, and you can access the webinar in Spanish, French, Arabic, and English languages about Cartagena Protocol and about the BCH. I can access the education material in English by clicking the green box, BCH English Training in Course. Here we have education materials with different kinds of documents that you can download. You can access recorded webinars uh, about how to use these education materials. Here you have some specific education materials to customs officers. For instance, stakeholders curricula, training manuals, case studies, reading, reference guide, and the portal HTPI, portal on the handling, transport, packaging, and identification of LMOs. And we can see some documents, for example, standards for shipping of LMOs. We come back to the education materials and download the training manual number 11 as an example of that specific training materials. This manual is designed to provide a guidance to custom officers, users of the BCH. This manual provides a brief introdu introduction to the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety, outlines some of the protocol's key elements for relevant, of relevance to customs officers, describes the roles of customs officers in the implementation of the protocol and guides users in how to access information in the BCH that is important for customs officers. With the, this, uh, with the present exercise, you could learn about the role of customs officers in the implementation of the Cartagena Protocol. That role is verifying that the information of the LMOs has been provided in the accompanying documentation of the LMOs shipment, inspecting incom incoming shipment of LMOs, verifying that LMOs for import have received the necessary approvals, and detecting unintentional or illegal transboundary movements of LMOs. Into the education materials list, if you click on the case studies, you can access the 31 case studies available for download. We are going to download the case study number 7, but we are going to include in our exercise the case studies related with the role of the customs officers. The title of the study case is A Custom Officer Seeks Information About the Importation of LMOs. Scenario. A new customs officer in Hungary received documentation about a shipment of mice 
that has arrived from Latin American port. The maize was sourced from Argentina and Brazil and is destin destined for food processing in Hungary. The custom officer is unsure if this shipment triggers any specific concerns as regards the importation of LMOs. Reviewing the scenario, a new customs officer in Hungary receives documentation about the shipment of pies that, have, that has arrived from, Argen, from Latin American port. The mice comes from Argentina and Brazil and it's going to be used for food processing in Hungary. The customs officer is unsure if this shipment triggers any specific corners concerns as regard the importation of LMOs. Question. Who should the customs officer contact to seek clarification about Hungary's import requirements for LMOs? Will this email be the subject to the provision of the Cartagena Protocol? What information should be available about the LMOs? What information should the customs officers expect to see on the documentation accompanying the MICE treatment? <coughs> The mechanism that I am going to use in this presentation to answer the question is firstly showing the Cartagena protocol issues related and then finding the information required on the BCH page. Who should the custom officer contact to seek clarification about hunger import requirements for LMOs? Which is the authority responsible for performing the administrative function required by this protocol in each country? the competent national authority. Why you can find the competent national authority information on the BCH? Because its party has to notify the Secretariat of the Convention of Biological Diversity of the names and addresses of its competent national authority. And the Secretariat has to make this information available through the BCH. This is the web page of the BCH. In this page, you are going to find information about the competent national authorities. Okay. On the navigation bar, on finding information drop-down menu, we are going to select national contacts. In this page, uh, there are several search criteria boxes. In the country box profile, I'm going to select Hungary. In the type of national contact box, I'm going to select all competent national authorities. Then, click on the search button. We can see two competent national authorities in Hungary. We, if we open these records, we can find all the contact information of the Hungary competent national authority. Okay, the second question. Will this shipment be the subject to the provision of the Cartagena Protocol only if the shipment could contain LMOs and, for example, if Hungary has not approved those LMOs? There are different ways to know if the shipment contains LMOs. For example, the customs officer could find if the B in the BCH if Argentina and Brazil cultivate transgenic corn. The customs officers have to verify if the information has been provided in the accompanying documentation of the shipment. The custom officers have to inspect incoming shipment of the LMOs. So, taking in account the national legislation, for instance, it could be collected a sample from the sh shipment and sending it to a laboratory of, for detection and identification of LMOs. The shipment could be sub to the protocol if the LMOs 
have not been approved for import into Hungary. The customs officer have to verify that LMOs for import to Hungary have received necessary approvals. How could the customs officer assume that the shipment contains LMOs? Find an information about transgenic corn approved in Argentina and Brazil. Why customs officer can find information about transgenic corn approved in Argentina and Brazil? And why customs officer can verify that transgenic corn for import have the approvals in Hungary? Because Cartagena Protocol requires party that when they make a decision regarding LMOs for feed food or for processing LMOs, FFP, shall inform the parties through the BCH. It's very important to know that each country could have a specific regulation to import LMOs FFP. So, the BCH plays an important role. It is the central mechanism through which parties will be made aware of the use of LMOs FFP and their potential transboundary movements, as well as the national legislation which will apply to import LMOs FFP in each country. Why the custom officers could verify if the, if the LMO's identific identification has been provided in the accompanying documentation of the shipment? Because Cartagena Protocol stipulates that each party shall require that documentation accompanying LMO FFP clearly identify that they may contain LMO's. To answer the que second question, in, the, in this web page we are going to find the information about transgenic corn approving in Argentina and Brazil, transgenic corn approving in Hungary, LMO information into a decision, the national legislation in Hungary, and laboratories for detection and identification of LMOs in Europe. On the navigation bar, find an information drop-down menu, we are going to select Countries Decision and Other Communications. In the Countries box, we are going to select Argentina and Brazil. We click the <clears throat> green arrow. Then I look for Argentina. And while you hold down the control click, the control key, click on Brazil. Click on the control click, uh, key, click on Brazil. In the tab of decision, select decisions on LMOs for direct use as food or feed or for processing LMOs FFPs. In the type of living modified organism, select filter by parental organism, common name. And in parental organism, common name, select corn. Corn. Click on the search button. Here we have 40 records about the decisions in Argentina and Brazil. Here we have to take into account that Argentina is not part of the Cartagena Protocol. Nevertheless, countries which are not part of the protocol are invited to publish biosafety information on the BCH. Because of Argentina and Brazil have commercialized transgenic corn, the shipment could contain LMOs. 
Now we are going to find the decision of Hungary. <coughs> on the navigation bar, on finding information drop down menu, we select country decisions. On the country in the country box we select Hungary. Hungary. In the type of decision we select LMOs FFP. The type of living modified organism we select filtered by parental organism, common name. And uh, in parental organism we select corn. Click on the search button. Now we have not, long, not only the Hungarian decision, but the European Union decisions. This is because Hungarian is part of the European Union. Now we are going to compare. For example, in Argentina has been approved this LMO, MON 810 slide 6. We can see done in a European Union this LMO has been approved too. I want to show another example. This LMO ACS, I, went, I, I am going to look for this LMO into the European decisions, ACEs. This LMO has not been approved in Hungary and not in European Union. So the shipment could contain LMOs which have not been approved in Hungary. The shipment is not only the subject to the provision of the Cartagena Protocol, but the subject of the provision of the Hungary domestic legislation. Mm. Okay. Now we are going to find all the leg legislation in Hungary. How we could do that? On the navigation bar we have a small uh, windows. Country profiles. In country profiles we can select Hungary. Here we can see all the information that Hungary has published through the BCH. We are going to click on law and regulation you'd like. We can see uh, for Hungary there is one law and uh, not only for Hungary but the Uni European Union we have 21. We are going to open this law. <coughs> and we can see one law of Hungary. Knowing the legislation allows the custom officers to detect unintentional or illegal transboundary movements of LMOs. This is one of the most important role of the custom officers. Now we are going to 
find information about laboratories for detection and identification of LMOs. On the navigation bar, on finding information drop-down menu, we select Organizations. In the ge geographical region box, we select, for example, Eastern Europe. And in type of organization box, we select laboratory, laboratory for detection and identification of LMOs. Click the search button. Here we have 23 laboratories for detection and identification of LMOs in that region, Eastern Europe. If we open this record, we can find all the contact information of these laboratories. Okay. Question 3. What information to, should be available about the LMO on the BCH? This is the same article that you have seen before, but another section established that the information that the parties are obligated to exchange through the BCH is the information listed in the Annex 2. Now we are going to look for the information of the Annex 2. On the navigation bar, on the protocol down drop menu, we can select text of the Cartagena protocol. Here we can see all the articles and annex of the protocol. We are going to see this specific article, but now I want to show you the annex 2. Here we have all the information required concerning living modified organisms intended for diet use as food or feed or for processing. For example, the name and contact details of the applicant for a decision for domestic use and so on. Okay. Question 4. What information should the custom officer expect to see on the documentation accompanying the mines shipment? To answer this question, we are going to see the Article 18, which has been one of the most controversial articles on the protocol and a subsequent decision made on the COPMOP meeting. The COPMOP, as the government body of the protocol, plays an important role in the evolution of the protocol and may undertake further work on some of the areas on which the protocol text does not presently provide clear guidance. That's why the Article 18 is accompanied by subsequent cob mob decision. We are going to find information about the decision BS3-10. It means the document number 10 of the third scope map meeting. Okay. You have seen yet how to access the Cartagena protocol test on the BCH and you know how to access the Article 18. Now I am going to find, as an example, only one COP map decision associated with the Article 18. Then I will show you a summary of the Article 18 and the decision. How to find the COPMOP decision on the BCH?
Okay. On the <coughs> navigation bar, on the protocol drop down menu, we can select COP mob decisions. Okay. On the subject, we can select Cartagena Protocol and Biosafety, Handling, Transport, Packaging and Identification related to Article 18. In the meeting box, we are going to select Cup Map 3. Click on the search button. Here we have three decisions related with the Article 8. This is the decision that we want to see now. I'm going to show you a summary of the Article of 18 and only one decision related. Article 18. We are going to see only the first part of the Article 18 because we are talking about this kind of LMO which are intended for use as food or feed or for processing, FFP. Each party shall require that documentation accompanying the LMO FFP clearly identifies that they may contain LMOs. And the decision PS3 slash 10 that accompanied the Article 18 re request party to the protocol that documentation accompanying LMOs FFP clearly states in case where the identity of LMO is known, that the achievement contains LMO, FFP. In case where the identity of the LMO is not known, that the achievement may contain LMO, FFP. Okay. Um, on the BCH, you can find special activities and resources for custom officers. I'm going to show you this resource on the BCH. Okay. On the navigation bar, on the protocol drop-down menu, click on Handling, Transport, Packaging and Identification. Then, on this page, select HTTP portal on the left hand menu, HTTP portal. Here we can see, for example, a network of the LMO detection and identification laboratories, training of trainers, workshops for customs officers, online forums on standards for LMO shipments and some documents, for example, standards for shipment of living modified organisms. Now, I would like to give the flood to Mohammed. He uh, could extends, uh, give more information about uh, the about the Tools for Customs Officers. Mm, just a moment, please. I'll give him the floor, okay? <coughs> I'll Mohammed. give that a lot. Mohammed, you have a floor? Yes. Okay. Can 
you share a screen? So, thank you, Emma. So regarding the documentation requested by parties during uh, COPMAP3, there have been issued some examples of documentation that may accompany the shipments. And uh, in my screen, actually, I'm showing you one of these documentation related to information required requirements um, as for Article 18 to B of the Cartagena Protocol. So this is a, just an example you may use and you will have also to fit this example with the national legislation about the documentation needed at the ports or airports or whatever. So this is the first example, so an example of template for Article 18 to be of the Cartagena Protocol. So at the top you have the name of the company of in or institution, uh, letterhead. Um, this is uh, in conformity with the Annex 2 that Emma showed earlier. So you will may find here the name and address and phone and contacts, etc. of the company. Then you have the invoice and the, the red part of the invoice will correspond of the indication requested in Annex 2. So you have uh, the company or institution, the contact person, the street, the city, postal code, country, phone, fax, and email of the exporter, of the importer, and of the contact point. So then you have some shipping details, cheaper reference number, cheaper contact details, and in the third table you have data on quantities you are sending in the shipment and weight and volume and the, the description in red here related to the living modified organism you may find here the destined for the uh, you may find here destined for contained use and you have here the name of the organisms you uh, in the shipment and uh, maybe intended use for example, research or others. So at the bottom you have uh, the information regarding the, the safe handling, storage and transport and use of these elements. And these will obviously will be in conformity with, with the protocol. So this is an example of form. Uh, you have here the first example, for example, here we have put some information on the invoice uh, for uh, this kind of uh, documentation that may accompany the, the uh, LMO. This is the first example. Uh, you see that in the part uh, uh, dedicated to the LMO, you have, for example, here one item. Uh, it's a bag. It weighs uh, 50 uh, grams. Uh, the living modified organism is destined for contained use. Obviously, 50 grams, maybe it is the sent to a laboratory. So it is provia, and it will be, be used in uh, research. Um, so the, mm, the elemo is in a form of seeds. And uh, the trait here is a PRSV resistant for papaya ring spot virus resistance. So this is a summary of uh, information on the LMO and the quantity sent in this uh, treatment. And then in the uh, part uh, uh, dedicated to the safe handling, storage, store, transport and use, you, you are requested to only uh, use this in registered facilities. That means contained use in the uh, national country laboratories. 
there is another example here for the same kind of uh, um, activities. So here you have the complete information, the name, air build, etc., etc. There are a number of pages, etc. You have the company institution, etc., etc. Then you have the quantities here, and with the ID number here, um, several other information on the uh, living modified uh, organisms. Um, and then you have information on the uh, address uh, you may contact if you have um, some uh, inform more information you are requesting about the safe handling, storage, transport and use of this LMO. Um, that's it for the uh, contained use. You also have another document uh, related to uh, the, the same in the same article, and that this one is uh, requested for um, the use in the environment. So we have the same thing you have here actually uh, four bags, for example, that they are weighing one kilogram, and this is the description for the LMO, and actually this uh, is a release in the environment and it has a permit now for experimental release. Um, it is also a research material. So here for all indication required for safe handling, etc., the uh, um, exporter asks the to see the permit price uh, 343402. So this kind of information in documentation uh, that accompany the uh, achievements. So we have here two examples, but obviously both of these examples have to follow both the protocol if the country is party, but also and more probably the leg legal um, situation in the country. And that's all, Emma. Okay, Mohammed, thank you very much. I don't know if, if you could show us where we can find these kind of documents on the BCH. Okay, okay. So uh, this uh, the same screen uh, uh, that have shown earlier, uh, um, Emma. So you go to the BCH website and you click on the um, menu for the protocol and you go to handling, transport, packaging and identification. So in this page you will find all what indicated already by Emma and at the bottom of this page you have this uh, documentation. So the first one is this one, I pick this one, so just you click here and you will download the document. It is uh, Article 18 to be English. So you may download it. I have downloaded it already. And the second one is this one, um, Article 8 to an intentional introduction into the environment. So you just click here and you may download it. So I have downloaded it already. That's all. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, it was a very useful information for, for us. Um, I only want to say that uh, this is the end of the presentation, but uh, I want to open a space for questions, please, if you, if you want to raise your hand or write your questions through the chat box or question box, go on. <coughs> Is there any question from the participants? I see no question, Shema. Okay, uh, now uh, Ernesto, if you want to finish this webinar, please. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much, Emma. Uh, thank you all for participating in this webinar. 
uh, we invite you to continue uh, participating in our webinars and uh, also forward the invitations to whoever you uh, think that may benefit from these webinars and the BCH education materials. Thank you very much and good morning and good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much to, to everybody, uh, especially Ernesto and Mohamed. Uh, Mohamed, would you thank like you. to say something? Uh, just uh, thank you and uh, see you in the next webinars maybe. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.